hopefully. Uh, okay, so thanks for listening to that. So, and uh, apologies that um, that lady was talking very quickly and there was a lot of information to take in, but I've taken out the six or seven basic points. And uh, for those of you, a couple of people were just a little bit later than some of us joining the call, we'd already started. But just to let you know very quickly, what we're gonna talk about now is what constitutes a contract. And uh, it obviously affects all of us in our daily lives. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about international contracts. And then we're gonna talk about a little bit about the internet and the uh, consequence of the internet on international contracts. The, the real overriding theme being we're, 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 we're responsible for whatever we sign for, basically. So just in terms of that, before we go through this slide, um, I just wanna recap what we talked about there, the formation of a contract. So if you've got your pen handy, if you didn't catch it from the way that lady was speaking very, very quickly, We've already agreed that a contract of sale is whereby a seller, seller transfers or agrees to transfer a property for a buyer to the price. So what really makes up a contract is an offer of service or product, the acceptance of the offer and a consideration, that being the price. So those are the three main things. What am I gonna give you? What are you gonna give me? and uh how much are we going to pay for that how what is going to exchange that whether that could be goods or obviously in most cases it's money but that's essentially what constitutes the the, uh, the the contract the nature of the contract but then we have the written contract itself and whatever industry you work in maybe have a look at uh contracts tomorrow that your organization works with because you're certainly um in the organizations that I've worked with, we follow this every time. What I picked up from this, and have your pens handy, was the contract name needs to, needs to be called a sales contract. We need to explain what the agreement is. Contract of sale in many respects. Sales contract, sales agreement, whatever it might be, but it needs a name, it needs a heading. Every, that's number one. Number two, the second point is every party involved in the contract needs to be named. So there's no point in having a contract if we don't say on that contract who the contract is between. So Joe Bloggs and Janine Bloggs, whoever, need to be named in that contract with as much information as possible. You know, for example, there's no point in putting my name if you don't really put my address and my contact because there are a number of Martin Nichols around. So the contract could be through somebody, but if my telephone number's on it, my email address is on it, and my name's on it, I am identifiable to that contract. So normally it will have two business entity names as well, or the address or whatever it might be. And this, I would say, becomes more and more important as we go internationally and as we start dealing with businesses overseas. Because obviously contracts are more difficult to control the further they are away from home. Uh, okay, so number three, description. So number one, name, sales contract. Number two, define every, every party. Number three, a description of, the, the, of what the service is or what the product is. Number four, guarantees. What guarantees are we going to offer? And what price are we going to charge, pay, whichever way you look at it. So already... And as I reckon, said before, we've got the, the uh, offer. We've also got the, what, what one party is going to give and what one party is going to, what the other party is going to give. So what each party is going to give and take with a description of the service. Then we have penalties, as she mentioned, to make sure there's a proper exchange of value. And I think also one of the most important things are subject to the laws of. I ran companies in Singapore, Australia, and wherever they might be working across the region. But for example, when I ran a company in Singapore, although I was working pretty much across the region, the uh, a global contract or a regional contract would generally be uh, associated or, or administered under the legal jurisdiction of Singapore. Maybe our two head offices were in Singapore 
or if it was a one-off, purely in Indonesia, it would be between my office in Indonesia or an and an Indonesian client or Australia and Australia or wherever it might be. But for regional stuff, it was generally the headquarters. But it's very, very important because um, that's where we can come into problems. She mentioned signatures, and uh, it seems very obvious. But I can't tell you how many times I've seen agreements sent to a client, client in principle agreeing, and that you know you sell something, you say, oh, yeah, we'll charge you 19% or whatever it might be. The contract goes to the client. The work starts, yet both parties have not signed a contract or the scenario is often the case where the supplier will send the signed contracts. So sorry, the supplier will send a contract to the buyer and perhaps they haven't signed it because it could be still draft, but then the buyer signs it, sends it back to the supplier and the supplier just puts it in a, in a, uh, in a draw. But unless it's a two way agreement, it's not going to be relevant in a court of law. So that's one of the things to think about. And also print it off. Seems obvious again, but um, it's amazing the amount of people that don't. You know, if my uh, computer crashed this morning, well, I'd have had problems finding this, this presentation. <laughs> um, similarly, um, uh, with a contract that's, that doesn't exist, or, you know, you change your computer, uh, whatever it might be, always have a hard copy. So just to recap, Name of the sales contract, number one. Number two, name every contract. Sorry, name every party. Number three, a description. Number four, guarantee. What happens if we don't provide? Number five, price. Number six, subject to the laws of. Number seven, signatures. And after that, make sure you print it off. Otherwise, you're going to have a few problems.